In today's video, we're going to take a look at setting up Xero for a US based business. Most of the time when you hear me talking about Xero, I'm talking to a UK audience, but I have got clients throughout the world and I've also worked with US companies for the past 25 years course not all in zero so I thought it was time to do some videos for the US market so in today's video let's head into zero and take a look at setting up zero for a US based business before we do a like and a subscribe would be great because that's what helps me to continue creating these videos okay let's look at the zero setup for an organization based in paying taxes in the USA. So you've got your business name and then when you come to organization type you go to the drop down and here are the options that you have that are relevant for the US. So for example if you're a sole proprietor, if you're an S corp, these are the different options you would choose the correct one. We'll leave that as corporation. You would fill in your business address, your physical address if it's different or you can copy it. If you want to add social links you can and then you would choose next. The next screen zero takes you to is your financial setting. So we have a year end date of the 31st of December. We choose change if we need to. So now we're looking at sales tax. What is the tax basis for sales tax? So if we go to the drop down, we can choose the two options, cash basis or accruals. We'll choose accrual. You'd fill in your tax ID number and name here and then the tax period. This is the period that you report based on whether it's one month, two months, three, six or annual. We'll choose a month. And then these defaults are fine. This is when you input your sales, they're going to exclude your sales tax. And when you're inputting purchases, the default is no tax. Here's what the options are if you needed to change these. Remembering these are just defaults, you can change them at a later date and you can also change them transaction by transaction. Then next, and we come to invoice settings. If we choose default, this is when our bills are going to be due for payment. Defaults, but again, can be changed where our sales invoices are due for payment. So let's say that the default for our business, our sales invoices are going to be due for payment 14 days after the invoice date. Now, what do you want your documents to look like? So when you create a sales invoice, Zero's suggesting you give it a prefix of INV and the next number is one. So you can change that if you want to. You can maybe want to call it SI for sales invoice. If you've got numbers already, your next number might be, as an example, 305. Same idea for credit notes, purchase orders and quotes. We'll save. And then what we can also do on this screen is we can look at the layout of our sales invoice. You can have more than one layout. There's one at the moment and it's standard. If we choose options and edit, I'll just quickly take you through it. So it's got the page sat, it's no surprise and it's US letter size. There's a little bit that you can do on margins, not an awful lot, a little bit on fonts, and then you can change what you want the title of your invoice to say. If you don't want it to be all in capitals, for example, you could change it to say that. If you wanted it to say sales invoice, you could. Does help if you can spell. And then if you look at these ticks, what's the information that you want to be shown on your sales invoice? It's self-explanatory, but it might not be clear at this stage what your invoice is going to look like, but that's all right, because once you create a sales invoice, you can look at it in zero, and then you can come back to here and make changes until you get the layout the way that you want it. Here's your payment terms, so the details for paying your invoice you would fill in here. This is the contact details which feed through. I didn't put an address which is why it only says XU USA. But once that's all finished, again we just save. Remembering that we can come back to this at any time. So then we choose next. Do we want to set up any more users? We'll say no at this stage. Do we want to add any foreign currencies? Again, we're going to skip that at this stage. What are the tax rates that we're going to use? Well, zero is already going to give us four. So sales tax and imports, tax exempt, 
tax on purchases and tax on sales. They're going to appear in zero with tax rates of zero. And you've got an explanation here because the tax rates, your sales taxes, will depend on the location of your organization and depend who you're selling to, where they're located, following US rules. Again, we'll choose next. And we've got three options here. We can use the default chart of accounts by zero, import from a file, or the current chart of accounts. So let's say next and take a look at what that gives us. And this is what the default chart of accounts looks like in zero for a US business. So we can go through the headers, which might be easier to review. So if we choose assets, you can see that your current assets and in fact, your fixed assets are 100 codes. So you've got office equipment as 150, depreciation office equipment 151, computer equipment 160, depreciation on computers 161. So if you wanted to add vehicles, I would say you would create a code 170 for vehicles, 171 for the depreciation. So then if we go to the liabilities, these are 200 codes in zero, so you can see what zero has set up. Your sales tax code is 220. Then you have employee and income taxes. And then there's these historical and rounding codes that hopefully you won't be using. Then if we go to equity, we've got owner's contribution, owner's drawings, retained earnings and common stock. Expenses. This is the one where you will possibly play around with it. So you've got direct cost, anything directly related to your sales. So if you're purchasing the items to resell, you would use the cost of goods 500. Then you have your expense codes, which go through 600s. And then if we scroll down, 700s and 800. So if we just look through them, 600, I think would be where you be adding things. So we've got advertising, bank services, janitorial, general expenses. So if you needed to add anything, you can see that there's gaps between these numbers. So you could easily have a new code 601, 602, 603. Then following the logic, we can see that 700 codes are depreciation taxes. 800 codes are interest and then bank revaluations and codes related to if you have foreign currency where you have got gains, it would be gains and losses. Then the final tab to take a look at is revenue and zero uses 400 codes for revenue. So if you needed more than one code, again, there's only three set up here. You've got 400 for sales, 460 other revenue, 470 interest. So if you needed to split your sales, you can have code 400, 401, 402, whatever you choose, and you can rename them as required. So hopefully not too much to change on your chart of accounts. Initially, you can tailor it in future when you realize what you need. Then we go to next. There's not a bank account set up. That's all right at this stage. We're just going to say continue and account balances where we're setting up our conversion balances. So we're asked what date we want to start using zero, and then we need to input our conversion balances based on that date. So the conversion date here, we're saying is we're starting in March 2022, so we'd enter balances at February. If we needed to change that to January, we would do so here. Once we're happy with that, again, it's next. So now we need to enter our conversion balances at the date we've chosen. So at this stage, there's only two lines here for your accounts receivable and your accounts payable. You can add new lines, so you would add all your balances here once you have them. So if you start using zero a year end date, you would get your previous year's balances and fill them in here. When you fill in accounts receivable and accounts payable, you will need to add in for receivable the sales invoices and for payable the bills to agree to the balances that you enter. If you use zero from the start of setting up your business, then you won't have any conversion balances you need to enter. We're going to choose next and we're going to say finish. So that is the setup of our US business. I'm going to do one further thing. I'm going to go to accountant and I'm going to go to the chart of accounts. And you may recall that we didn't add a bank account. To add a bank account in zero, so we know that the assets, again, if we go to them, 
are 100 codes. So what I'm going to suggest is that we use code 100 for our bank account. So we're going to say add bank account. Let's just choose a bank. We'll choose Citibank. Zero is expecting us to connect to the bank account because we're in a demo. We're not going to do this. Also, you might not want to do it at this stage. So you can say skip. What's our account name? So business account, we'll just fill that in. What's our account code? So this is the code we want to use in Zero. So we said code 100 is what we'll use. What is the bank account type? So we'll just choose everyday account number. So this doesn't matter because it's demo data we're using and we'll choose continue. And that is our bank account set up in Zero as well. And if we go back to our dashboard, if there's anything that we need to change, so for example, if we needed to change our sales taxes, we would go to accounting, we go to advanced, go to financial settings, and then we can make changes here. If we needed to change our sales invoice layouts, we would go to our business name on the left, we would go to settings, we would head over to the right and we would choose invoice settings. And hopefully you'll recognize where we are here. So for example, we didn't talk about this previously. This is where you would upload your logo. Okay, so back on the dashboard, if we wanted to go to our chart of accounts, it's accounting chart of accounts, and we could make changes. Again, back on the dashboard, if we wanted to change our business details, we'll go to business name on the left, we we'll go to settings, then we go to organization details, and we could update, fill in our information here. So as you can see, Zero takes you through the setup in a logical manner, but you can go back and change things at a later date. That's Zero US setup. I hope you find that useful and until next time, wherever you are, happy zeroing.